Hey everybody, Kurt here. Today I want to show you how you can do plate solving using my ASI Air and my Skyguider Pro. Wait a minute, Kurt. The Skyguider Pro, that's only a tracking mount. That's not a go-to mount. Yeah, that's right, Kurt. This is a tracker, just like the Skywatcher Star Adventure. They're non-go-to mounts. Now, there are tons of videos and other information on how to plate solve with the ASI Air with go-to mounts, but there's really not much of anything for how to do it with a tracker. I did find one other video on how to plate solve with a star tracker done by Walt from Delta Astronomy, and he's got a great channel. I highly recommend watching it, and I'm gonna provide a link in the description section of uh, my video. I am gonna show you how to do the polar alignment with, with the tracking mount as well. Hi, I'm Kurt Zeptel, and you're watching AstroQuest One. So, what is so great about doing plate solving with a star tracker? Well, if you're imaging with a fisheye lens, which has an exceedingly wide field of view, or a 50 millimeter lens, you can just point in the general direction of your target and you'll be fine. But if you are shooting with a 200 millimeter lens or bore or greater, boy, you are gonna be hunting around for quite a while to find your target. It doesn't look like what it does in the pictures. You might see diagrams or something like that on Stellarium and you might say, oh, this looks easy enough. I'll just uh, point it there and zip, zip, zip. I'll be right there. Well, forget it. It's gonna be very difficult to find and you're going to be spending a lot of time trying to locate this object. That's where plate solving comes into play and it'll tell you when you're on the object because a lot of these objects are so dim, you don't know if you're on it. So let me show you just a couple things you wanna do before you go out there in the evening and go try this plate solving and trying to find the object. Okay, before you run out there in the evening, it's a good idea to do a couple of things beforehand. One of them is to get the coordinates of your object and I wanna I'm going to, my target's going to be the North American Nebula, and I click on it, and it gives me the coordinates, the RA, and the declination, and then you want to record them. I've already recorded them on a sheet of paper. Now, there's a J2000 and a J now. The J2000 is the coordinates based in year 2000. They do change ever so slightly from year to year and they give you the j 2000s the standard atlas but there's also j now which is as of today or 2020 and the asi air uses j now so you want to record that one but even if you use the j 2000 it'll be very close so you might have to tweak it a little bit but you might as well just use the j now because that's what uh, the asi air uses now another thing you can do or i like to do is you might want to take a little screenshot of this because when you do the plate solving and let's say you're a little bit off let's say you're down in this area the plate solving program will actually have some of these targets in labeled you can annotate it as i'll show you later on when i do it so you'll have an idea of where you're at so you'll know if you're close by but the plate solving will also give you a readout of the coordinates, so you'll know what, we, what you have to do as well. And also, this is Stellarium. If you use Telescopius, uh, they use J2000 for their coordinates. Okay, let's see what's next. Okay, so next time you should be hearing from me, I sh should actually be demonstrating this, and hopefully it'll be tonight, but whoever knows of the weather around here. Hi folks, so I'm doing exactly what I hate doing, and that's doing this a video in the middle of the night when you can't see anything, but I'll do my best. So I've already focused it, and now what I'm gonna do is do the polar alignment. After that, I will do the plate solving. I'll show you what buttons to press on the iPad, and then I'll come back and show you. Basically, I'm just gonna adjust the uh, altitude and azimuth by hand, and I'm going to rotate the, the whole setup by hand. I'll show you this right along, so here goes. Okay, you're looking at my screen, so you press Preview, Polar Alignment, 
and it's gonna say set up the scope. Press the butt tap button to start it. Now I can just press skip because it's not a go-to mount. And I'm gonna rotate. So I just rotated my camera. I just wanted to show you what I just did. And press rotated, and it's gonna take a picture to plate solve it. All right, and then press let's go, and let's see how far off alignment we are. Okay, not, uh, not too bad. So now I'm just gonna adjust the L as button on the mount. And for this, I'm probably gonna go to the altitude first. Press refresh. Now I'm getting pretty close here. All right, so I'm within one degree. This is good enough for this scope. This is only a 200 millimeter lens on here, but I'll, I'll get a little closer. If you had a, la a longer focal length scope, you'd want to be closer in, but this is, man, this is really good. Yeah, if I have the, my really good go-to mounts, I can get the smiley face. This is harder to get the smiley face on here. All right, I think I just tried to raise it up too. So. All right, I'm going to call it quits with the uh, polar alignment. So next, I'm going to start the plate solving. Okay, first off, we turn this off. We're going to press this, confirm. All right, and now we're going to come over to preview. And the first thing we want to do is remember we made the coordinates. Remember we had those coordinates here we laid out already. So we're gonna look for the J now because that's how the ASI error plate solves and that's what it's reading. So we're gonna look for something 20 hours for RA and deck 44, that's our goal. So I'm gonna move the mount, but now that the polar alignment's done, I'm only gonna, use, I'm only gonna turn the RA and the declination of my, of my mount now. And I'm going to adjust it so to where I close to where the North America Nebula is. So I'm going to point it close to Deneb. I'll show you what I'm doing right now. Okay, I adjusted it by hand to where I think the North America Nebula is. And the first thing we're going to do is take an exposure. And guess what? You see those stars, how they're sort of kind of wonky. I'll do it again. I'm going to do it again. Uh, you probably can't see it, but uh, what happened is I forgot to turn Sky Got Her Pro on, so it wasn't um, wasn't tracking, but now it's tracking. Okay, much better. So now we're going to press well, a couple things. We can press this tools button and we can press annotate. And annotate says, well, there's not no known stars or objects here, or it can't see anything in here. But let's press the plate solve button. And look at that. Gave me a reading already. It says RA 22. And declination is 39 degrees. We're supposed to be 20 degrees for RA and 44 degrees declination. So I'm far off. And the first thing I'm going to do is adjust the RA. All right, I'm going to take another picture. I have no idea if I went in the right direction or not. <laughs> so I'm going to find out in a second. If I went the wrong way, then I'll just turn it the other way plates of and 21 degrees so it is I may going the right direction before it was 22 now it's only 21 so I'm gonna do it again it's 20 hours and 59 minutes and we're at 21 hours and 7 minutes so I'm gonna leave the R8 alone now and I'm gonna go after the deck So I just moved the declination, and I, I'm just taking a guess at which way to go. I don't know if I'm going the right way or not, but we'll find out. We'll press OK, and we'll press plate solve. Wow, <laughs> I think I'm right on there. My God, I am. So I should be in here right now, and I can see it. I, I know you guys probably can't at all, but it's right in this area down here. Here, I'll do a 10-second exposure, should do it. 
or maybe you can see it a little better now if you can see the outline here's mexico gulf of mexico uh, here's mexico and the gulf of mexico is right here so i want to point it upwards because i want to get the the pelican in it and let me do this uh, annotate right now to see if that's oh there it is you can see it right there so it's telling us there's a north american nebula all right so i'm going to move it up a little bit okay i'm good all right, and uh, now the last thing I want to show you. Hold on, I'm going to turn off for a second. I just want to show you what guiding looks like. Let's take a look at that. First off, we're going to turn this annotating off. And we're going to turn on the guide scope. And it says guide camera none. All right, now the guide camera's on. And all the conditions are set. Now, when you do guiding with a sky guider pro or any other star tracker you are not going to be guiding in the deck direction so you got to turn it off now the way to do guiding is you turn it on and you press the that button it starts taking pictures and it's showing the stars so it's focusing good enough i want to press it you but you, you start by pressing that button but before i do that let me just show you press this graph button down here and you see how the graph shows up that's real important because that's where you turn your deck on and off, like it says off right now. If I press that auto, that means deck is on and it wouldn't do the auto guiding with this mount because it's a it's a sky track. So we gotta turn it off. Now I'm ready to go. Alright, so you just press that. Confirm. It's telling us the deck motor is off and only RA will uh, be calibrated, and that's fine. Please connect the mount first forgot to do one important thing here turn on the mount that's why it was giving me that error confirm deck is off there we go and now it's going to do its calibration so when it's calibrating you want to have it go a distance of of 25 where it says distance up here that button has to it has to go out to 25 and you usually want to do it optimally about five to ten steps i'm going to go a little bit longer but all right, so the distance is 25 now. Now it's going to start to go down. If it did take a lot of steps, like if it was over 25 or 30 or more steps in order to get to a distance of 25, what you would do is you would raise the calibration. Now, I've got it set for 2,000. You know, you can raise it to 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 8,000 in order to make it increase the distance. If it does it too quickly, if it went out to 25, a distance of 25 in like two steps, you'd want to lower that value. Okay, we're set. We're guiding. Now those numbers will start settling down. I know that they look kind of high right now, but they, as the night goes on, it goes down. So let me uh, turn it off right now and I'll set up a run and I'll turn it back on so you can see my first image. Well, I guess I can make this video longer. You can watch what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go over here to auto run and we'll press that button the last thing i did was flats so I'm change that to n g c seven thousand and i'm using the nbz filter n b z so i'm putting that designation in here it's done all right, I'm taking lights, and the exposure I'm going to go, I'm going to go 180 seconds, and yeah, let's do an hour and a half. Press OK. I'll leave the ASI air on. I might shut it off later. And the RA is uh, 1.21. See if uh, take our first image, see what it looks like. I'm going to turn it off now, and I'll come back on when it uh, when it's completed. Okay, folks, here it comes. And notice. The RA and the deck and the guiding and the total here, the, the numbers really calm down. Ooh, look at that. Wow. All right. That's what I want to see. All the stars are perfect circles. Excellent. Okay. Well, I'm going to let it do its thing. Okay, folks. I think that's all for now. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you learned something, and we'll see you next time. Bye.